This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I've spent the last year of my life completely renovating an old apartment. I've torn everything down and we've built everything back up. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the tools that I find the most useful for both renovations and DIY projects at home. Now, in general, the type of tool you'll need depends on the project that you're doing. But I've tried to look back at the past year with all sorts of different projects and in all sorts of stages of the renovation, and these are the tools that are most useful across the board. Now, obviously, since I was making and building stuff before I started these renovations, I have a workshop, I have a bunch of tools. So if you're looking to start completely fresh, I've got two separate videos, one for hand tools and one for power tools that I'll link up here or down below. So I recommend checking those videos out as well for a bit more information on basic hand tools and power tools. So before we get started on the renovation specific items, I think a drill and a jigsaw are really good basic power tools to have. I use these in so many projects. I've actually built a complete chair from scratch with just these two power tools. Check out that video up there. And in addition to those power tools, I'll include a tape measure, a knife, which I really like, a pen, and a square. Those items, great to have regardless of what you're building. Now moving on to the first tool, which I found incredibly useful during these renovations, and this thing is a cross line laser. Now, I actually bought this tool specifically for these renovations really early on, and I've used it so many times for so many different things. Now, what this tool actually does is that it projects up to three lines all the way across the room, and all the lines self-level and are 90 degrees to each other. We used it right at the beginning when we were leveling off the new floor, and had to screw in a bunch of new boards perfectly level across an entire room. And then the same exact thing just in the ceiling when we created a new perfectly flat ceiling that had to span across the entire room yet again, where we're just able to raise the boards up to laser lines, screw them in and know that we're just perfect. I've used these two other lines like this to create layouts for a room. Really easy to mark up 90 degree lines over a large area. And since the lines go from all the way at the bottom to all the way at the top, I've used it a lot of times to transfer a point on the floor to a point on the ceiling using the cross at the bottom and the cross that it projects at the top. I really love this tool. Unfortunately, yeah, this one is quite expensive, but I'm sure if you're just doing simple DIY projects, a cheap one from Amazon will work just as fine as well. By the way, I'll link all the tools that I recommend and I've personally used down in the description below. So if you wanna check them out, they're right below that like button. Now, here's the tool number two on this list, which I also bought specifically for this project, a big sledgehammer, and we're gonna pair that with a crowbar. When looking back through footage of all the renovations, I've come to realize how many times these things were actually used. Super helpful to get a bit of extra momentum behind something, tearing down walls, floors, ceilings, whatever, smashing tiles to bits, smashing concrete to bits, because a lot of the times when you're doing renovations, it's about tearing stuff down before you can build something up. So this guy's your friend, and it's also really fun to just smash some stuff. Talking about smashing stuff and tearing stuff down, really, really useful tool that also bought for this project was a cordless circular saw. Now, some of you might know that I really like these types of plunging track saws. Super precise, but like the name suggests, you need a track. This thing plunges, you can't lock it in place. It's kind of expensive and it has a cord. And I didn't really feel like using this to chop down just rough material and potential cutting through a bunch of nails. So this thing with a relatively inexpensive blade on it and a blade depth that you super easily can just set and lock in place. I've used this thing to cut down everything from walls to floors, cutting rough lumber to size. I really recommend it for a lot of rough and quick work. Oh, and by the way, quick side note, you might have noticed that a lot of these tools are the same colors, so they're the same brand. I'm not saying this is the best brand. I'm sure all the other brands are perfectly fine as well. The main reason why I have this brand is just because I have a lot of their batteries, so it's more convenient and a lot cheaper just buy new tools without the battery because I already have them. Now moving on to the one thing that is not a tool on this list, but I think probably is the most important one, and that is good health and safety equipment. Ear protection, breathing protection, and eye protection. During renovations, there's always a lot of dust and debris flying everywhere, and you don't want that getting into your lungs and eyes. 
and you don't want all of these super noisy power tools damaging your hearing because you'll never get that back. Now for the mask specifically, I recommend getting one with interchangeable filters because once these things get dirty, these things are super cheap to replace. Whereas if you spend a bit more money on the mask itself, get one that is comfortable to your face and creates a good fit. That way it's comfortable to wear and you'll actually wear it more. And depending on the type of job you do, you can also get filters for different kinds of things like dust or chemicals. And boy, let me tell you, some of these days during renovations have been the most dusty and dirty of my entire life. There's periods of time where we could not see further and my arms reach in front of me. And I don't want to think about what all that dust over all that time would have done to my lungs. Next on the list, levels. Now, even though we have cool modern new fancy toys like this crossline laser, sometimes an old school level is all you need to get the job done right. There's no setup. These things are super easy to use. They're fantastic for all sorts of things like getting one board level to another one or getting studs in a wall plumb. They're really good for double checking your work. I've used them a lot when we laid tiles to check if they're actually flat and level or if they have the correct pitch towards somewhere. And of course you can use the longer ones for longer spans, but also to check if a wall not only is plumb, but actually flat because these straight edges are, as the name says, perfectly straight. And depending on the classification of the level, these things are super, super precise. Like this one is precise to 0.4 millimeters over the span of one meter, which in renovations is super overkill. <laughs> Talking about measuring and checking stuff, this little tool is fantastic. It's a laser measuring tool. And what it does is use a laser, which you can point at stuff like the MDF back there, and it will tell you really precisely how far that distance is. And it's especially convenient when you're trying to get measurements that are not on a flat surface, but let's say from the floor to the ceiling or to a wall that's really far away, where if you have long spans or high ceiling height, it's really cumbersome to try and get this thing to get as high as possible before it collapses on you. I use this thing all the time, both in the planning phase when you're trying to get exact measurements of a room with a lot of long dimensions, as well as during construction, when measuring for things like the length of a stud to a wall or to the ceiling, or when I built my new ceiling, I had to measure the length, I had to cut all the studs, and those measurements I had to get by myself all the way up at the ceiling where none of the walls are 90 degrees to each other. Really, really useful. Now for this next tool, I quickly want to talk about organizing all the small bits and pieces you need during renovations, especially nuts, bolts, screws, and things like that. Now, for those of you who followed me a while, you might know that I've printed a lot of these plastic boxes where I hold all of my screws. These boxes are a part of a bigger system that goes into these toolboxes, which are also homemade with all these colored parts being 3D printed. And inside of here, I organize all sorts of different things. So obviously, I really like these. I brought a bunch of these to the job site with me, which is really great because it allowed me to have everything in one place. And these cases specifically have this really cool feature where you can flip the whole thing upside down and nothing will have lost its place. But doing bigger projects, you need a lot of these cases because there were just so many different types of screws and nails and bolts and all sorts of different stuff. So you end up with a bunch of these that end up laying all over the place and you have to go search for these cases. So I ended up making a tool cart that organized all of my organizer cases so that I can stay extra organized. I mean, you can sort of tell that I like organizing things using boxes and 3D printing. <laughs> And by the way, if you like this thing and want to build one for yourself, I'll have the build plans and 3D files available to download on my website, which is alch.shop. I've got a ton of different types of boxes and 3D printed parts in that organizer system, so go check it out. I use it for everything from organizing nuts and bolts in the workshop here to over here where I've got all my drawers of tools perfectly organized. Now that is also a perfect segue for today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now that website that I just told you about where I sell my plans and 3D files, I made that website using Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Squarespace enabled me to super quickly and easily create my own website. 
It was really easy to set up. I did not need any technical knowledge. I just chose from any other multiple award-winning templates and got started creating my own website right away. Whether you're selling physical or digital products, Squarespace has the merchandising features to make your products look your best online including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. And if you sell physical goods, you can even offer on-site pickup, either that is through your own store or at an event or a market. You can now even create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now for the next tool, I wasn't initially sure if I was gonna include, but looking back at the footage, I came to realize how much I actually use this thing. It's a hammer drill, it's fantastic to drill into concrete and harder materials. Now this is obviously gonna depend a lot on what types of projects that you do. If you're working mainly with wood, this thing isn't super important. But we had a bunch of brick and some concrete and this thing does wonders to drill into that. I've said this in the past as well, I do recommend getting a proper hammer drill over getting a combi drill that also has a hammer feature. I think you're way better off getting a lighter and cheaper regular drill and then saving up a bit of extra money for a proper hammer drill. Now for this next tool, which is an oscillating multi-tool, this thing, you're not necessarily gonna use a whole lot, but when you need it and you have it, it's gonna get you out of a pinch. It's fantastic to cut really narrowly into stuff where you can't really cut with a circular saw or even a jigsaw. I probably only needed this a handful of times, like when I was cutting out electrical outlets or trimming off the old floorboards all the way against a concrete wall. But for those few times, this thing is really valuable to have. We were talking about creating dust earlier and how much I do not like to breathe that stuff in. So the next thing on the list is a proper vacuum cleaner. If you're planning to do a lot of DIY projects or innovations, especially stuff that generates a lot of dust, like drywall and drywall sanding, I highly recommend getting an industrial vacuum cleaner. Definitely doesn't need to be anything fancy, just something that is meant to handle the loads of dust that these types of projects can sometimes generate. Because the vacuum cleaner that you've got at home probably won't like buckets and buckets full of drywall dust. Trust me, I've killed two of those home vacuum cleaners. Like I said, the type doesn't matter, but one feature that I do really like is the ability to plug in your power tool so that when you turn on the power tool, that dust extraction starts automatically, which especially if you're trying to keep a clean workplace is extremely helpful. And here in a workshop, I use it for all of my tools. Now related to that vacuum cleaner, I do have a fun little side project and that is this thing, a bucket with a 3D printed cyclone on top. In case you don't know what a cyclone is, it's basically a thing that separates dust from air so this contraption sits in front of the vacuum cleaner and separates all the dust into this bucket so you don't have to switch out all the expensive bags in this thing all the time. You can buy these things, but you can also 3D print them like I've done here. And in case you have a 3D printer, I'll leave the link to the 3D model down below the like button. Now for this next tool, again, really depends on the type of job, but this thing is a miter saw. Now these things are obviously super useful for things like framing or flooring, everything that needs nice and square cuts. And especially if you need to do a lot of them because this thing is a lot easier to use than trying to use a square and a circular saw and getting that right every time. This particular one is back in my workshop and is mounted on a little cart that I made. But if you're planning on using this a lot on the job site, getting a proper stand for it, because then you can much easier cut longer pieces of wood and they'll still be supported. Now this next tool on the list, I wasn't really sure whether or not to include it until I watched back all the footage and realized how many times I've actually used this thing. Now this tool, essentially, it's just a drill with a specialized attachment in the front that has a magazine full of screws so that you can screw in multiple screws in a row with one hand. Most of the time, you'll see this used for drywall, but I've also used it a lot to screw into wood for things like walls or the entire flooring in the entire apartment. It's worth noting that these things sometimes can be a little bit finicky and annoying, and there's nothing this thing can do that you 
can essentially do with just a regular drill, but I've used it a lot and it saved me a lot of time. So I figured I'd include it. I also just want to say you don't need to buy all the tools all the time. Most of the time you can rent a bigger, more professional machine for less money than it would have cost you to buy that cheap tool that you'll never use again. A good example is for instance a tile cutter, which is really big and can be quite expensive. And in our case, we used it like once for two cuts and I'll probably never use it again. Or a concrete mixer, which I actually ended up buying. This thing is awesome. It saved me a lot of time mixing a whole bunch of concrete. But let's be honest, I have no idea if I'll ever use this thing again. And on that note, I really hope that this information has been useful to you. I'm not saying go out and buy all these tools. These are just some of the tools that I found really useful in this project. And if you want to see us use all these tools, we've got a complete build series from start to where we're now documenting the entire process. That playlist is right here. You can check out my website, alch.shop, for cool build plans and 3D files. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.